Mr. Ambada, thank you so much for agreeing to talk to us uh, and welcome to the Emergency Governance Initiative. So to kick this off, uh, and also for our international audience, I think we probably should briefly rehearse uh, the different tiers of government in South Africa, in Gauteng, in, you know, then uh, the, the different city municipalities that are involved, uh, what they are, how many there are, so that's clear. And then the broad uh, intervention, the broad multi-level governance approach which you have designed to deal with this particular emergency around COVID-19. Gauteng City Region uh, is uh, constituted of uh, three big cities, which is Johannesburg, uh, Eguruleni and Tswane, and two districts, which is the West Rand and City Bay. A lot of those people are in the big metros, the city of Johannesburg. The Gauteng Provincial Government is led by the Premier, who you could consider as the Governor, with uh, 10 members of the Executive Council. So in response to the COVID-19 pandemic, because we have always looked at ourselves as a seamlessly integrated province or city region, our structures have been such that uh, led by the Premier, and the mayors on a regular basis, we meet and find solutions as to how best we can get out of the pandemic and manage it in a more coordinated and more uh, integrated manner. Uh, on a daily basis, led by the head of administration, the heads of different departments and the city managers, we meet to assess the state of readiness, to assess the impact of our plans in making sure that the Gauteng City Region, uh, because we are currently the epicenter, our health system is able to respond to the uh, peak as it grows in the different uh, uh, parts of our provinces, in particular uh, our, our, our areas where we are most vulnerable. Of course, we rely on networks and partnerships because we are home to a number of universities and research institutions. So research and data is critical because uh, as a city region, we have established what we call the Gauteng City Region Observatory, which assists us to help us with data analysis. Uh, one of the things we did through the City Region Observatory was to, uh, just before COVID started, to do a vulnerability index mapping because every two years we do what we call the quality of life survey. We now knew where are the problems in our cities, where are the problems in the region, and we then said together with you, uh, what can we do to solve the problems? Yeah, there could be an issue of social distance because some of the places are, popular, are densely populated, some of the places is not easy, uh, for people to access uh, some of the social amenities and their social health determinants. So together, what do we do to help this uh, community? Uh, and, and, and of course, we've got one central dashboard for the whole region, and it then helps for planning uh, from the teams in the districts, in the cities, to be able to say our problem is in this community. If you had to uh, highlight these the key point of the new operational model, which you were able to now uh, bring forward, uh, literally in, in the briefest way possible, what, what are the headlines? The first one I think is a, a situation where we all sit in one room and have a sense of what is happening in our space. With regards to our health system, whether it's a provincial responsibility or city responsibility, we've now agreed that uh, from the community health centers, the primary health centers, we have to put resources across the system of government so that we are able to respond to the needs of that community uh, because everybody is in this one space called the region of Gauteng. Going forward, we are now going to be in a position to say, if we are to support small uh, SMMEs, uh, we have to support them in an integrated way so that there's no difference with what the other cities doing or the other region is doing. And lastly, I think is the issue of how business has been working together with the state or government. And I think that is one of the things that the regions have got to enhance so that uh, the, 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 the private sector and the state work in a manner that is serves the interest of people. What were the specific integration mechanisms which you used to really 
cut across three uh, municipalities, which you have already alluded to, uh, your own uh, government, and then, uh, of course, the national government. What we have in place uh, as an emergency structure, like I was saying earlier, is what we call the Premier's uh, Coronavirus Command Council. That is the Premier, the 10 MECs, the heads of departments. Then we have the District Coronavirus Command Councils, which bring all the mayors in one room. And these two structures also are supported by the administrative uh, structure that is led by the Director General that meets regularly every day at three o'clock. But even that structure is supported by our sub work streams or work streams. So in essence, we institutionalize what we call a PMO operating model because it helped, it assisted us over the past few days to be able to become project-based and project-oriented and result-oriented. And it also improved a sense of accountability. The same structures that exist in the region are then replicated in the sub-district, which is uh, our metros and uh, the other cities so that they themselves uh, operate in a seamless and integrated way so that when we convene other structures in the regional level, they are equally represented. Is it fair to say that uh, the, the, the approach to the regional coordination is very much uh, a, a, a perspective of leading from the top, uh, giving sort of the broad direction from top tier governments and then distributing it down towards uh, the municipalities and then even below that into the sub-districts? You need to be able to provide leadership as the center. If the center is not clear, you are unlikely to solve the problem. But also if the center does not demonstrate a, a more social capital appreciation in terms of engaging with all the parties con uh, involved, in this instance, the head of government is in the premier, learning from also what the, our president does, engages leaders of churches, engages faith-based organizations, labor and everybody, so that, as you say, we are not just uh, coming from the top, but we're also uh, working on the basis of what people are saying and their concerns are being heard so that the, the risk-adjusted measures that are always introduced based on evidence put in front of us are also conversed. To what extent was it adjusted specifically to the needs of uh, certain groups, whether, uh, for example, women or migrant groups or certain uh, uh, ethnic minorities? We also have what we call a migrant desk in the region office of the Premier but also in mayor's offices in cities, because we have to deal with the related challenges. The issue of women is a big issue, and children, uh, we have to create a dedicated through that uh, work stream that I call the social, social security work stream, also because they are more vulnerable uh, communities. So we had to make sure that uh, we create a dedicated focus for them. What are lessons uh, learned which you think are transferable? I think the first one is a, is a government that is with and works with communities. That's one critical lesson. And I think the second one is a, an evidence-based government system. We need to really invest in data uh, uh, analysis, invest in uh, evidence-based decision-making. The other point is that uh, we need to appreciate that uh, COVID-19 has asked us to do a reset on a number of things. And one of them is to really look at the economy. The economy and the economic systems that have been there for some time have not responded efficiently to problems of inequality and poverty. And therefore, we really need to think differently. And that's why working with the private sector and the markets, we need to be able to redirect. And I think the strength of a a functional region or state, which is a developmental state, must be able to plan. You know, the planning capability is very, very important.